What up, audio nerds? Uh, so, we have the DT1990, the darling of the audiophile and studio listener alike. Uh, super flat bass that go all the way down. Uh, these things really slap. But they are known for having a bit of a peak in the treble. So, as you can see, this pair has been converted to take a balanced XLR. That's a pretty common mod. But these ones... Oh, what's, what's that? What's this? It's got a little, uh, it's got a little switch. Click, 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 click. And basically what we've done is we have incorporated a passive filter into this. What that will do is take the frequency response from this. As you can see, you've got quite a big peak around eight kilohertz to this. Less of a peak. <laughs> so it just makes it a bit flatter, a little bit harsh at the high end. But these things do, like with that peak there, they do kind of have that sparkle. So that's why we've made it switchable because there's some tracks where it just just makes it a little bit special. But uh, for long listening periods, it's a little bit too harsh. So, uh, so yeah, so you can switch that filter on and off. We've chosen quite a nice kind of chunky switch to go to go with it. Just I think it, it just matches the kind of retro future look of the DC 1990s. Now then, the, uh, the specs for this was not our design. It was cut with by the solder dude over at DIY Audio Heaven, and he was nice enough to let us kind of use his design in these headphones. So check them out. They've got loads of great articles on, uh, on how to modify your headphones, and they'll actually sell you a cable with this filter built in. So you can basically add this to your existing pair, and reduce that treble peak, but yeah, just because you know, it might be interesting. We're gonna do it here. Uh, it, is, it is a service we offer on the DT in 1990s. Yeah, we had to make it uh, for some reason, we sold three in a row, so I had to make some this weekend and uh, thought I might as well film it. It's a little bit difficult because obviously, uh, they're very small components, so you can't necessarily see them that well. But uh, if you're interested in seeing how these things look inside, what we do to make them watch the video and uh, obviously take some time to like it if you like it and subscribe if you want to see some more of this kind of stuff but anyway on with the show hello my peoples and uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit more advanced we're going to be popping a we're going to be making a passive filter for a set of DT 1990s just basically go through what we're going to do so we've got a switch here which we're going to use to bypass it so you can hear the original signal unfiltered or you can switch the filter on it's gone off in between on this switch, but that's uh, not necessary. And the filter is made up of three components. You've got a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor. So a capacitor will block frequencies below a certain, certain frequency and let higher frequencies through. And an inductor pretty much does the opposite. It blocks high frequencies and lets through lower frequencies because it basically has a resistance to change in in uh, in voltage so essentially these are all chosen at a certain value to let through whatever high frequencies we want and whatever low frequencies we want and then with a gap in the middle at about 8k where we where we want it and then the resistor just lets through the unfiltered signal. So changing the value of the resistor will basically change the amount that this 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 filter acts on the signal. So hopefully with these three components you get like a nice balanced sound but without the big peak at 8k. Uh, we've had a little bit of a play around and uh, this is a setup that we like and obviously as it's switchable you can switch it off it's not something permanent. So you really want to reduce that 8k peak. So if you find uh, yeah, so if you're finding it a little bit too harsh, you can basically switch that out. And then other tracks, it'll it'll probably sound good with it with it just as normal. So essentially, I've got a little bit of strip board here, and we're going to poke the components through. I've got a strip board that I've made with four rows. So we're going to have two for left and two for right, and essentially the signal is going to come in transfer it through the components and come back on another rail. Right, so let us begin. I'm going to start off by just poking these components through the holes. So I'm using uh, alternate rows, one for left and right, to 
give me a bit of a, a bit of space to, to kind of get the legs through. slightly because the idea is that they're going to fit inside the, the ear cup like that just glue those to the sides okay so that's the that's the actual electronic components next I'm going to have to attach the leads to them uh, so give me a minute I'll just do that <laughs> Yeah, so as you can see, everything's in there. Um, it's a bit of a mess because we've done point-to-point -point wiring with quite fat wire. But um, what I've done is I've kept everything around the edge here, away from the, the driver and away from the air holes because these are semi-open. We've put a little bit of damping material in there just to absorb some of the sound. And actually, this lot being in here, it's going to break up the, the sound a little bit as well. So we've got a four pin socket now instead of a three pin so that these can run balance. We've got a switch here, which switches in and out this um, passive filter here. So you can listen to it bog standard or with a flick of a switch. It's gonna reduce those highs a little bit to make it a bit less harsh. Now obviously all I need to do is uh, pop it back together and these are good to go. Oh, 